welcome at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery. Uh, this is a place where we take care of orphan baby elephants and rhinos and later on reintroducing them back into the world. And so all the babies you're going to see here today are orphans and all have been rescued from different parts of the country and they all have different reasons for being orphans. So that is why we rescue them so that we can handle them here for approximately three years and any time after the age of three start to reintroduce them back into the world. We'll always reintroduce them to Savo East National Park and Kibwezi Forest, a process that will take them a minimum of about five years before they start to... We will later on invite them and adapt them in their families. And once they get adapted, then we set them free and let them become wild once again. If you might be joining us for the first time, the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust is a project that was started officially back in the year 1977 after the death of David Sheldrick, who was a naturalist and the senior founder warden of the large Sava National Park. He died in 1977, and the project was started in his memory under the management of the widow, who is now the late Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick, who's been running the project since then, until two years ago, when she passed on, leaving the mandate to her daughter, Angela Sheldrick, who was running the project together with the mother, for about 17 years before the mother passed on. And right now, the project is under the management of Angela Sheldrick. So the elephants are spending all day out in the park. This is Nairobi National Park. So the elephants will go out every day in the morning at 6, always accompanied by the keepers to provide protection whenever needed. They come back for bed at 5 and they spend the night in a stockade where every elephant has got their own stockade. For those elephants that are under the age of two years, have a keeper spending the night in the rooms for the purpose of keeping them a company, for the purposes of feeding them on every them with blankets to make sure that they're kept warm. So here comes a group of uh, elephants, baby elephants joining us being led by the main matriarch in the nursery at the moment, an elephant by the name Maisha. Maisha is the oldest in the nursery now, and that's why she's the main leader of the main matriarch. She's over three years old. She was rescued from Sava Conservation Area when she was about eight months. And this was after the mother is believed to have died from starvation due to drought. And that's why she was left alone. Right now, she's over three years old and taking on the role of the mother figure of all the others that we've got in the nursery. We do have Maktao behind Maisha, who is one of the older bulls in the nursery at two and a half years. And Maktao was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area near a place called Maktao, found in a community all alone, while at the age of about three months. And that's why we rescued him. We suspect he might have been separated from his family by human beings and so is a victim of human wildlife conflict. We do have Ziwadi on my left, who is uh, two years old. And Ziwadi was rescued uh, from the Masai Mara, identified all alone within the park, suspected to have been abandoned or left behind by the rest of the family members for reasons we could not tell by then. But after some time in the nursery, we realized that she's being left behind by the rest of the herd. And sometimes she keeps on going the opposite direction. And later on, we discovered that she's epileptic and sometimes goes into seizures. And once she's down, she's left behind by the others. So we suspect that might have been the reason to why she was left behind by the rest of the family members. She's been on medication and has made a great improvement. We expect her to be back to normal and go out in the wild like any other wild elephant out there. We do have the youngest boy in the nursery at the moment, an elephant by the name Rojo, who is about 15 months old. And Rojo was rescued from Sava West National Park. The mother is believed to have been killed by poachers, and that's why he was left alone. Right now, approximately 15 months and adjusting well in the nursery with all the others, uh, getting all the privilege or priority of being taken care of by all the big girls in the nursery. He's so far 
are doing all right at 15 months old. We also have the youngest in the nursery at the moment, an elephant by the name Naleku, who happens to be about 11 months old. And Naleku was rescued from the Masai Mara. The mother to Naleku is believed to have died from a natural disease, and that's why she was left alone. In front of Naleku, we've got Mukoka at two years old. And Mukoka was rescued from northern part of Savo East National Park, a place called Idumba. Identified all alone within the park by aerial surveillance on patrol, who found him all alone. Observed him for some time, hoping for the mother to come back and collect the baby, but none existed. Which meant that he was an orphan, and that is the reason to why a decision was made to rescue him. He's about uh, two years old at the moment. We have been joined here by Kiombo, who is uh, two and a half, almost three years. And Kiombo was rescued from the Masemara. He was identified all alone within the park at the age of below a year old, which is not normal and also not safe. And that's why we rescued him. Right now, he's slightly over two years, has adjusted well. He happens to be the oldest boy in the nursery at the moment, slightly older than Maktao, close to me. And so he's the dominant bull in this group uh, or in the nursery at the moment. And he's a big elephant in size. We expect he'll grow very big by the time he'll be going down out in the world. Three more are joining us now, being led by Nabulu, the second matriarch in command after Maisha and Nabulu is a three-year-old elephant. Nabulu was rescued from the Masai Mara. She was identified all alone within the park, very thin and weak, a sign that she had stayed for some time without her mother's milk. But we could not tell the whereabouts of the mother and the rest of the family members and that's why we rescued her. A young elephant will need the mother's milk for the first two years minimum. If they happen to lose the mother so they're below two, it is obvious that they'll not survive. So that is why we have to come in so that we can help rescue him. I mean her. She's so far doing all right at approximately three years old. Right behind, we've got uh, Naboishu, who happens to be the latest arrival at approximately 18 months. And Naboishu was rescued from the Masai Mara. The mother is suspected to have died from a natural disease, and that's why she was left alone. We do have Lara on the other side, and Lara is two years old. Lara was rescued from the Masai Mara or Lara Conservancy, identified all alone within this conservancy, suspected to have been separated from her family by human beings, and so she's a victim of human wildlife conflict. And the last elephant to join us is Kiasa. And Kiasa is a three-year-old elephant having been rescued uh, from a Sava conservation area. She's a drought victim as well. Uh, she has to come last because if she comes in the beginning, immediately she finishes the milk. She wants to get more milk by force from the keepers or from the other elephants. And it ends up pushing everyone around to get uh, more milk. That's why she has to come last after all the others have had the bottles. She's a good elephant in terms of taking care of the little one. She's also actually directed her priority to Roho, who's been everyone's favorite uh, among us, the young ones in the nursery. So that makes a total of 11 elephants before us now, and all the 11 are under our care for the first three years. And any time after the age of three, it might be three and a half or four years, we take them to Savo Conservation Area. We've got three stations in Savo. Actually, one is at the northern part of Savo East, a place called Idumba, as stockades. And then we also have the voice stockades. And then we've got uh, Umani Springs, which is found within Kibwezi Forest. That is where we reintroduce the elephants after the age of three. We have our keepers that will monitor them in Savo, trying to reintroduce them to different groups of wild herds as they make friends and interact and communicate. But after a long period of that interaction, 
the relationship between our orphans and the world herds becomes a strong bond and our orphans will be invited and adapted in a herd of wild elephants and once they get adapted they'll be trained by the wild elephants on how to stay back into the world naturally they'll be protected against all other dangers out in the world by the wild elephants they'll also be warned against human beings by the wild elephants which means all the orphans uh, you can see here now at some point will have become as wild as any other elephant out there and when we see that happen we can successfully say we've achieved our target our main target here is to rescue them since they were found orphans and read them uh, later on uh, reintroducing them back into the world So while in the nursery the elephants need a 24-hour care all day out in the park in the company of the keepers as they browse and, 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 and play and sleep if they want. So the keepers just set them free and let them learn what they need to learn by natural instinct these elephants. Most behaviors in elephants are instinct. They just need direction and they know what to do. And that's why we have the keepers always accompanying them to provide protection or whenever there is any need out there. They come back for bed at five in the stables and we bring them to spend a night in the stables because out in the park we've got lots of all other wild animals including the lions and, and the hyenas which is not very safe for these baby elephants. So that's why they have to spend a night in the room. Generally, the life of an elephant revolves around the lives of human beings. For example, elephants will live as long as we do. Approximately 60 to 70 years is their lifespan. And this depends on the nature of their teeth. They have got six sets of teeth, and every set lasting for about 10 years. That's why at the age of 60 to 70, all the teeth worn out, they will die from starvation, which is a natural death. Elephants will also attain maturity at the age of between 10 to 15 years, starting with the females as early as 9, 10 years, and the boys at a later age of about 15, 16, or 17. The gestation period of an elephant cannot be compared to human beings. The gestation period is approximately 2 years, exactly 22 to 24 months. They always stay in groups and families under the leadership of the oldest female who by natural instinct automatically becomes the main matriarch. The boys will leave the families after maturity, which is about 15 years. And when the boys leave the families, they go to join a bachelor herd somewhere else. Some boys want to go and stay by themselves. And some boys want to go and look for females in other herds in a different place. They're generally social animals. The females in a herd have got very strong maternal instinct. Despite them having the main matriarch as the oldest female, all the other females uh, will always help the matriarch to take care of all the younger ones in that herd. You can see perfectly they use their trunk to pick the branches and put in the mouth. The trunk is the most sensitive part of, on an elephant's body. The trunk alone has got 40,000 different types of muscles. And that is why it is used as the hand as well as the nose. So they will suck water and bend the trunk and blow it into the mouth. They'll also use it to collect the leaves and put in the mouth. The two, uh, you, at the top, at the tip of the trunk, we've got two finger like where they use to collect tiny objects on the ground if they need to. So if an elephant uses the trunk, then they are not in a position uh, to feed properly. They'll also breathe through the trunk as well. They all have different characters, just like uh, human beings, and close to me is an elephant by the name Laro. Who's been, and, uh, who's been in the nursery for about one and a half years, who's been being taken care of by the big females in the nursery, 
until the arrival of an elephant like Roho and Naleku. That's why we've also realized that despite her being a baby who has just attained two years, who has been being taken care of, she also has the maternal instinct. She's also responsible of taking care of the little ones. In most cases, you realize Naleku is following her behind and also following on Mukoka at the far end. Mukoka is a bull elephant in the nursery who has uh, actually shown exemplary character by taking care of the little ones. And that's why you'll find at, at some point Naleku very close to Mukoka as well. The two, Mukoka and Laro, have a special bond with Naleku. Main matriarch in the middle, Maisha. So if you're joining us now, welcome at the Sheldrake's World of Trust, Nairobi Nursery, where we are taking care of orphan baby elephants, rhinos, and later on reintroducing them back into the world. They're all orphans, so that's why they're here. They've been orphaned from different parts of the country, all with different reasons for being orphans. Some of them, the mothers have been killed by poachers due to tread and ivory, and uh, poaching in our country, I'm happy to note that it's going down. We pray and hope that uh, the trend continues to drop so that we don't have these animals being killed because people are interested in their ivory. And it is unfortunate that uh, to some extent, uh, ivory poaching is still taking place. I want to say it's unfortunate because it's being perfected by we human beings. And yet it is our and protect for these animals. So we fail in this role by causing them to be left orphans just because we are interested in their ivory. And an elephant ivory adds no value. So that is why I would like to urge all of you who are here today to help stop poaching. And you can help stop poaching from wherever. Things that are made from ivory, we stop to buy from the rhino horn. And we also uh, continue to educate or inform our friends and neighbors and relatives about why important uh, these animals uh, need their ivory. And by so doing, we'll have ensured that they only die from a natural death. Some of them are here because they've been separated from their families by human beings. And human wildlife conflict is a big threat to wild animals in a country at the moment. And this is because there is an increase in the population of man or human beings compared to the spare size of land. And this has caused human beings to occupy areas that belong to wild animals. And that is why areas where these animals have known originally to browse and look for water have now been occupied by people. Migratory routes of wild animals no longer exist, have been occupied by farmers. And people are doing farming, lots of developments and constructions are taking place. And that is why if these animals want to migrate from one area to another, they will find it very difficult. They'll encounter the crops and the structures. The owners will want to fight them in that process of the fight. The mothers might end up being killed. Or sometimes the babies will be separated from the rest of the family members. And nobody knows where the mother or the baby is gone. If identified later on, we are conducted and have to fly out to help rescue them from wherever part of the country that they will have been identified. And it is unfortunate that uh, human wildlife conflict is on increase in Kenya. A few of them are here because of natural reasons like old age, natural diseases, 
and starvation back out into the world. So if you're joining us now, we are at the Sheldrake's Wilder Trust, Nairobi Nursery. The elephants have been out in the park all day from 6 in the morning. Uh, they have come for the 3 p.m. milk feed. We feed them on intervals of 3 hours uh, day and night. And after here, they'll also go back into the park and spend the rest of the day until at 5 in the evening when they come back for bed. The Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust is working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service to ensure that all animals are safe in the parks. And that is why the Sheldricks have got other projects like mobile veterinary units, anti-poaching teams, community projects, aerial surveillance, dock units, and all this is to ensure that all animals are safe in the parks. For example, the communities have been educated on how to co uh, coexist with these wild animals. Uh, the poachers have been chased out from the parks by our anti poaching teams. The sick animals have been treated out in the parks by our mobile veterinary units. The orphans have also been uh, rescued. So, all this is to ensure that all animals are safe. Not only elephants and rhinos, but all animals in general. And that is why we are working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service to ensure that all that is successful. You might realize all the babies are interested on feeding on, on the branches out here. And elephants will feed on a variety of vegetation depending where the vegetation within the area they are. For example, in Nairobi National Park, what they're feeding on is from the current family of leaves, which is most readily available within Nairobi National Park. The Griwa type of leaves is most favorite is not readily available within this Nairobi National Park. And that is why if you go to Savo, Ramboseli, or the Masai Mara, you'll find them having a different vari variety, I mean a different favorite. They know what to feed on and what not to feed on. And the babies from a younger age will learn what to feed on by actually feeding on their mother's dung and also putting their trunk in the mother's mouth to know what the mother is feeding on. Here in the nursery, the same thing do happens. You'll see the young ones putting the trunk in the big one's mouth to learn and know what the big ones are feeding on. When they come in the nursery and they're still very tiny, the keepers play the role of the mother by ensuring that we cut the right vegetation for them to feed on. And from that, they get to learn what they need to be feeding on when they're out there. So if you're joining us now, we are at the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust. We are taking care of orphan baby elephants and rhinos. And we've got uh, 11 baby elephants in the nursery. And we've got 11 after we've taken seven to Savo to start the process of being reintroduced. Elephants like Tagwa and Tamiyoi went to the voice stockades. Elephants like Satao, Musiara and Dololo went to the Dumba stockades. And then lately, latest, we've got... Uh, Lugard and, and Nkesha, who have joined the Kibwezi Forest Orphans, and all the seven are doing well in the new homes. And so we've got 11 in the nursery under the leadership of uh, uh, Maisha, who is the main matriarch at the moment. You might be interested in supporting the work that is being done by the Sheldrake's Wilder Trust. You can do that by going on our website and finding how you can donate. You can do that by donating a bottle of milk to a baby elephant, 
by adopting an elephant or also by donating towards all the other projects that are being done by the Sheldrick's World of Trust. It is very to do that it's very easy to do that on a website. And uh, you, when you adopt an elephant, you can do it for yourself or as a gift to a friend. And if you're giving it as a gift, it is a gift receipt and they will continue to receive the updates every month. But if you're doing it for yourself, it's you that will receive the updates every month until after one year. We'll let you know so that you can decide if you want to renew it again or not. So that is how the Sheldrake's World of Trust managed to get the funds to help take care of these baby elephants and do all other projects that are based within Savo Conservation Area. So I'd also like to take this opportunity and thank you all for those of you who've joined us at this 3 p.m. milk feed. And thank you all for those of you who are supporting the works of the Sheldrake's World of Trust. And uh, it is because of your support that we are able to do this. So we just pray that you continue to keep safe. The elephants will be walking out into the park now so that they can uh, continue with the normal daily routine until at 5 in the evening when they come back for bed. Thank you very much. We'll continue to bring you more of these live feeds anytime.